Headshots are expensive. Many of you DM me asking for alternatives. As you all know, a few months ago, I made a video on how to take your own headshots from home, and I gave you walkthrough as to what angles to use, what to wear, everything like that. But those headshots turned out really well because they were taken on a fancy and very expensive camera. That's why they turned out pretty amazing. So that got me thinking. What if I try to take headshots on an iPhone? So many of you have DM'd, commented, and asked for this video, so it's finally here. I called up my boyfriend and I was like, yo, come over because we're taking headshots yet again. <laughs> Hi guys, it's Michaela Lyzak. Welcome to my YouTube channel or welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm honestly just trying to chill today. I am in my pajama shirt, pajama pants. This was definitely an interesting experiment. As you guys know, I'm very pro pay for headshots. In my very first headshot video, I explained that you should never take your own headshots. You should always get them professionally done because nobody in the industry is going to take you seriously if you don't have a professional looking headshot. And I still feel this is true. Yes, you can try and take pictures at home, even if you have a nice camera or even with your iPhone, but an agent, manager, casting director is not gonna see you as a professional actor if they don't see you with a professional headshot. It's sad, but it's true. If there was an easy way, I would tell you that's why I made the freaking how to do your headshots at home. And I think those turned out like really, really good, but it's because I had my expensive camera. So I'm like, okay, let's try and do it on the iPhone. But before we get into the video, please like this video because this actually took me a really long time. But if you could please like it, it would mean a lot because I put a lot of time into this. The first step I did was scouting out a location. The first place we tried was actually the place where I got a really good headshot with Caleb with my Canon Rebel T6i. And when I was doing it, the angles were just not working. I had to throw everything out from the video. The tips that I told you in there about how to angle your camera so that you could get the bigger eyes, like how professional headshot photographers do in their own studios. Yeah, it didn't really work. Because when you would lift your iPhone over the subject, it would just distort their body or their head. All of the things I used in my original video to actually make the shot look like a headshot, I couldn't really use with an iPhone. Also, be sure to go follow the subject of today's video at Seagotmore on Instagram. He was willing to help me with this and without him, I probably wouldn't have done this video like at all. You may also be wondering, why are you not shooting on portrait mode? Because sometimes when you're in portrait mode, the iPhone automatically will like fuzz like certain parts of your hair. So I was like, I'll just do it manually. Actually, the best location for iPhone headshots would be outside. We found that in a shady spot outside, you're able to get a more even image. We got about one good photo, so let's go into editing. I wanted to keep the editing software on the theme of free because I think if you're gonna try and take headshots with an iPhone, you're obviously trying to avoid spending. I used Facetune. I first started with cropping my image. Next, the most obvious step is blurring the background. This was extremely difficult because you can't really get a perfect blur. My technique that I use is I use like the lightest blur and I did get like some of the hairs on the outside. So I just like lightly blurred everything and then saved it. And then I went back into the blur. I went heavier and I did like more outside. So it's like a kind of a gradient effect. So it's like lighter blur then it's like getting heavier as you go out. I think you can catch on to that. Then I took care of any imperfections, but he really didn't have that many. Whitened the eyes, and I also went in with the detail tool. Next is Lightroom, which is also free to download. I just adjusted the colors to try and get them balanced and also make my subject look good. And the key to actually getting any photo, whatever camera you're taking it on, to look like a professional headshot is with cropping. You gotta be really close. You'll see how much it changes when you just crop in more. Step number three is preparing your headshot for printing. I was also thinking like, when you need to get your headshots printed, but it's an iPhone photo, it's probably not gonna be high quality. It's probably gonna be grainy. So I went to pixlr.com, created a new image, and the dimensions you're gonna wanna use are 2400 by 3000. After that, you're gonna create a black background, add in your photo, create a border around your photo, And then add your name in a simple Arial font. And that's your headshot. Done. Honestly, I think that the headshot is okay. You can tell it's taken on an iPhone, but that's what we did. I don't know what I was expecting. Like it was gonna be like the last one we had where it was so pretty and his eyes were popping. Please comment what you think of the final result. Comment down below if you think this was a success or a failure. If you were to send this to a casting director or an agency, I really don't think that 
they would take you seriously. Yes, it's unfortunate that you can't really get a good headshot with an iPhone, but it's just true. I feel like a lot of people try and take the easy way out when it comes to expenses and acting. When you get into the acting industry, it comes with so many expenses that are just unavoidable. Acting classes, headshots, retouching, gas money to getting to auditions, even living in LA, it's like a prodigious amount of money. And I get DMs from people on my Instagram. Do I really need acting classes to become an actor? I mean, if you don't wanna grow your skill, if you don't wanna learn how to actually act on camera, and if you don't wanna prepare yourself for the audition room, and if you don't want casting directors to take you seriously or see that you've actually prepared or that you've taken the time to grow your skill or even show an agent that you are serious about being an actor because you actually have training on your resume, then no, you don't have to take acting classes. It's necessary. You really have to save up the money to get headshots because it's an investment in your career. So if you're seriously serious about acting, you need to make an investment because it's gonna help you get closer to your goals. So moral of the story, even though it was a fail, I think we all learned a very valuable lesson. So save up and go get yourself some professional headshots. Okay, I think it's time to chill out and let's just finish off the video with a monologue submission. Oh my gosh, yes, girl. If you are interested in getting featured on my channel for your very own monologue submission, head over to my Instagram. And once you're there, you'll see a highlight section. You'll see a little bubble titled monologue. Click on that. And you will get all the information as to how to submit your very own monologue for a critique. This is from Mel Gamez. Gamez. Thank you so much for submitting. She has a YouTube channel called Mail the Queen, and her Instagram is at Mail the Queen too. So go follow her on there and tell her she did an amazing job. Let's watch the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom, boom, boom. All right. Whoa, hold it. Stop right there. I know you didn't just say what I thought you just said. Robbie asked you to do a dance. Robbie? As in my Robbie? As in Robbie who I've had a since I could walk? How can you do this to me? You're supposed to be my best friend. You know I had plans to marry him. So what if he doesn't even know I'm alive? That's not the point. The point is, you backstabbed me. You can't even... What? David wants to go with me? Get out. Really? How cool. We can, we can double date. Oh my god, can you imagine? Of course I'm not mad at you. You're my best friend. You and Robbie are meant to be. Really, you are. Besides, I've been in love with Davis since I could crawl. Okay. I have notes for you, Miss Maylie. I don't know how to pronounce it. First off, I honestly really like the monologue that you chose because I feel like there's so much you could work with there. Right from the get-go, I noticed that there was a lack of before thought. Everybody on the channel knows what is before thought. What's before thought? Before thought is a scene existing before we started rolling. You wanna make it like we're gonna click roll, but there was already a story before we even started shooting. Whoa, hold it. Stop right there. Yes, obviously the before thought is confusion. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. You see how I was thinking before I said my line? You gotta show that. That's very important. I would suggest keep your main eye line like this way so that we can see your whole face. Honestly, great cropping. I love how I can't see anything in the background. Obviously, you watch my channel because you know that that's the sweet spot for me. That's what I like. That's my taste. That's my taste. Pronunciate. I think there was a moment where I just couldn't understand what you just saying, sweetheart. I also think I'm going crazy because I keep doing all these accents out of nowhere. Vote now. Is she crazy? Yeah, look, listen, listen. How could you diss me? You're how could you diss me? And I know that you're supposed to say, how could you do this to me? You are the gateway between the writer's words and the audience understanding the theme and purpose of the scene. Make sure you pronunciate. This is my acting tip for you. I noticed that throughout your monologue, the execution of your dialogue is very monotone. It's lacking emphasis. Why is emphasis important? It's gonna add dynamics to your scene. Give it flavor. Robbie asked you to do a dance. Robbie? As in, my Robbie? Yeah, yeah, you go, Robbie, my Robbie? Instead, maybe say, Robbie, my Robbie? I think you guys get the picture. Other than that, great job. 
I also forgot to mention you should never cut yourself tape. Always keep just one continuous good take. Don't chop it up into sections and glue it together. I have a video on how to break down a script. In that, you'll see how I kind of pick and choose which words to emphasize. Go check out that video if you're interested. I think that's going to be it for this video. If you haven't already, you should subscribe. If you subscribe, I promise I will try my best not to keep doing these weird accents. Subscribe because I have a lot more fun acting tips coming soon. And if you haven't already, be sure to like this video. I'm going to head out now.